channel. Uh, so I'm back with another video for you. Today, uh, my latest mod repair is in this envelope. I'm going to be repairing the, uh, the tachometer in the gauge cluster. And also my driver's side window doesn't go up for some reason. It just lost all power. So I'm going to have to pull the panel off and see what's going on in there. I have a feeling that the wire came off the motor because that has happened before. Sometimes the wire just comes loose and gets in the way of the glass, and as the glass comes down, it pulls it off of the actual connector on the motor. Uh, so I just gotta pull the panel off. Hopefully that's the problem. I don't really don't want to have to change the window motor. Uh, but let me get this thing back to the driveway, and uh, we'll start working on it. All right, so in this envelope here, um, I went on to thirdgen.org again and picked up a new tachometer board. Now, what this does is, if you have a, um, this is only for 90 to 92, um, this part's going to work. But if you have a 90 to 92 um, V8 or a V6 Camaro, you can see that says V8 engine on there. Uh, and your tachometer is reading ridiculously high, like uh, at idle, say, I know when I first got this car, um, when I first put this cluster in, at idle, I was sitting at about like 2,500 RPM. I kind of repaired that. So, as you can see now, it's pretty good. Um, it's relatively accurate, but the only thing that I'm noticing is at higher RPM, it seems to not be as accurate. So, um, like I'll be revving the engine up higher than what the gauge is actually uh, showing. So that's why I actually went and was able to pick up this board. Um, this guy on Durgen uh, makes them. I paid, I believe, 60 bucks for this shipped. Uh, you can also get them on eBay. He sells them on there. And this is just a, um, this board is just for the, uh, the tachometer. This is what controls the resistance and uh, gives you a reading on your tach here. Now, when I said that I kind of fixed it before, there was a mod going around where um, you take this board out. Now, actually, I'm holding the board. You'll see in a second when I actually pull it out of the cluster. But uh, this chip over here, what happens is uh, something shorts out or goes wrong with that chip. And if there, it allows too much uh, power to flow through. There's not enough resistance. So I guess the gauge uh, is reading too high. So what I ended up doing was, uh, by looking through threads online, was you cut two of these pins and then you just solder in um, new resistors. And that gives you the resistance back to bring the... Uh, the needle back down on the cluster. Now that's what I did. Uh, it helped a lot, but being this is the exact uh, replacement part, this is going to make sure that the gauge is going to be, you know, 100% like new. It's going to be perfectly accurate. So that's why I still want to go and replace it. But uh, if your car is doing exactly like it described and it's just reading unbelievably high, some of them are even higher, then this is going to fix your problem. Um, as for Trans Am guys, as far as I know, there isn't a. Um, there's a uh, remanufactured part like this or a uh, board to help you guys out with your cars. Uh, he might be working on it, I'm not sure. I'll link to that thread down below in the description. Um, also, pre-90 cars, I've really, I'm not familiar with that cluster. I only had that cluster in this car for a little while and uh, my tack actually worked without a problem. So I really don't even know what inside of the cluster looks like. I had this one apart, I never had like a, you know, early to uh, late 80s apart. So I really don't know what's in there controlling the, um, the tack, if it's a board like this or something else. So I really can't say anything about that. But um, as for 90 to 92, this will fix that problem. So I'm gonna go ahead and um, get this cluster pulled out. Um, on this car, I believe the only thing that's kind of a pain is getting this knob off of here. I had problems with this before, but uh, once I get that pulled out of there, uh, it's just about popping the trim off. Uh, this piece over here comes out. And then the, uh, I believe there's two 10 millimeter or 11 millimeter nuts on the bottom of the cluster. And then I should be able to slip it out without removing the top of the dash pad. Uh, so let's start taking this thing apart. All right guys, so first thing we're gonna be doing here is I'm gonna go ahead and remove the headlight knob. Now on the 91s, the way to do this is there's a little button in here, so I'm gonna remove my um, my switch for my parking camera here. This just pops out. And then, if you could see in there, which it's very dark, you probably can't, but there's a little button uh, on the actual headlight switch that you need to press in 
in order to pull this out. And then this whole shaft is gonna come out. Uh, you'll be able to see in a second once I pull it out. But right now I'm just gonna go in there with a flathead screwdriver and um, press down on that and get this switch out. And then that's gonna allow me to pull this whole uh, trim piece off and get to the screws for the cluster. All right, I got it. Um, the screwdriver wasn't working, kept slipping off. So I just went and used the back of this uh, file. It gave me a lot more leverage and plus it gripped it better because it's rubber. And then literally one try it clicked and it popped right out. screws these are I believe seven millimeters uh, two at the top I'm actually missing one and two at the bottom uh, the only thing I got to do I just got to pull this, uh, this panel piece off under here that's held in with a couple of torque screws I believe uh, and once those are out it's just removing the little seven millimeters and then this thing just like comes right out no problem at all so uh, let's get this uh, bottom piece off now guys so the cluster is out as you can see uh, it came out relatively without a problem the only thing I did run into was that it was a little tight coming out between the steering wheel and the dash so if you want to get it out a little bit easier you can just remove the dash pad I was able to get it through though um, while I have this thing out I'll also show you um, how I have my check engine light set up basically the wire coming from the PSI harness for the check engine light I just, uh, hooked it up to the bulb for the factory check engine light and all I did was uh, I kind of cut off the terminal and solder the wire to that and then that way I believe the ground on this side is still going through the uh, the board the factory ground on the cluster and then the power is just being supplied by the um, PSI harness all right guys so here we are I uh, got the cluster on the bench on top of the blower actually and uh, to get this thing apart, you're just going to go ahead and remove these 5.5mm uh, screws all the way around the outside and then this is going to take the, uh, the front glass off. Alright, now once that's off, then there are uh, a little more five and a half millimeters down there and that's going to take this um, shield off and then inside of here is where our actual uh, chip is going to be in the bottom. And there we are. Now that's the actual board for the uh, speedometer side and here is the tack board. Now as you can see here uh, this piece here, this is in stock. This is actually where I modified it. You can see these are actually resistors. And if I could pull this out of here. All right, so I got it out. Uh, and here's the old board. And you can see what I was saying with that chip. That's literally where I clipped the, um, the pins where they connect to the board. And I just bypassed the chip with my own resistors. And that's what actually... Uh, brought the resistance up and allowed the gauge to read uh, more accurate again but we're not going to need this because we have the new chip and uh, 
So I'm just gonna pop this back in here and then uh, put the cluster back together. It's as simple as that. This just slides right in. Uh, put the cover back on, get us back in the car, and uh, we'll see how the tack works. Uh, it's not gonna be a dramatic difference with my car, like I said, being I did go ahead and do that thing with the resistors. So I wish mine was kind of already reading like off just so I could show you the difference. But if your car is doing that, this is gonna fix that problem. So the cluster's back in. Um, I actually went through my stash of third gen screws and I found a, uh, a seven for the one that I was missing. Um, now before I uh, put this thing back together, I'm just gonna start the car, make sure everything is uh, working fine. Um, also something to note, I forgot to tell you before, I did go and disconnect the battery just because when that, uh, when the headlight switch is actually pulled out like that the headlights are going to stay on so you're going to want to pull the battery off to make sure um you don't kill it while you're uh, pulling the cluster out so i'm just gonna put this back on here see headlights are on all right guys so i got the cluster back in um i do have the car running just because i didn't put the uh the headlight switch back in yet but uh, as for the tack, it seems to be working all right. It seems like it's idle. It's reading a little lower than what it's actually idling. Um, I tried using the little Bluetooth adapters with my phone to get an RPM reading, but they're not connecting, so I can't actually see uh, where it's actually uh, idling at. Uh, so I'm just gonna get this back together, and then let's go take a look at this window, because like I said, um, out of nowhere, it just stopped working but I'm pretty sure that the connector just came off the motor. So I'm gonna get this back together and then let's take a look at that door. All right, so we got the dash back together. Now let's uh, take a look at this window. So let me put the ignition on here. And here's the problem I'm having. Yeah, there's like no noise from the door whatsoever. So either the motor just totally went out out of nowhere, even though they are new motors or the connector came off or the wiring got ripped out. So let's get this door panel off. door here and noticing well the wire seems to be intact it didn't fall off which kind of sucks I was really hoping that was gonna be the problem because I don't know why out of nowhere the window just stopped working I mean I never really had a problem with it before because one time like the way the wires ran it was behind the glass so the window came down and it literally just pulled this plug off. But it looks like that isn't the problem. I have a feeling the motor may have just went out. You know, maybe it's a fuse. Let me check. Let me get this back on here. I got the thing is my passenger window, I need to switch. The switch is broken so it doesn't go back up. Okay, that is working though. I hear it. Let me get a voltmeter and I'm gonna hit the switch. I wanna see if any power's getting here. If no power's getting here, I'm gonna try switching the window switches over there. All right, so I got my voltmeter hooked up here, just plugged into the connector. Ignition is on. 
and yeah, we got nothing. I mean, there's a little bit of a glare, but I'm not getting no voltage at all. So, most likely the switch is broken. I just pulled the shifter plate, I could get to those switches. So let's do that now, I'll pull off the knob, pull off the plate, we'll pull that switch out and uh, see what's going on in there. We're inside, we can get to our window switches. Maybe that was just loose. That came off pretty easily. Hmm. I don't think I'm going to just this here and see if it works. It felt like it fell off. It was like very loose. Oh yeah, it's working now. See? Go bolts. Up, down. All right. Okay, so the clips just came off. So that was an easy fix. Uh, while I'm in here, I am going to see. I think I have a, a replacement switch I could throw on this one. Because this switch is completely busted. It sticks. And um, actually, let me, let me, maybe we could figure that out now. Let's see. Yeah, it went down a little. Then it just completely stopped. Uh, before... This was happening the window would go down fine and then when it would go up it would stop halfway i would have to wait a second press it again then it would go up and both window motors are new um it really seems like it's a problem with the window motor like uh it would overheat and then you let it rest and then it comes up that's usually a window motor problem but this switch is very like sticky feeling and i feel like it's just the terminal over here now i'm just going to I'm just going to plug in the other switch to the driver's side and see what that does. So the driver's side switch is good. Oh man, I hate this kind of thing. All right. That's not doing anything. I hear it trying to go a little bit. So chances are, unless there's something in that door that's like binding up, which I don't think because um, this has been a problem that's just been gradually getting worse and worse. I am probably going to have to replace that motor once again. Uh, so that's going to be another video. So I'm going to throw this all back together and uh, we'll wrap this video up. So I got the car all back together. Um, you can see my window is working now. It was just the plug that came off of the switch. Uh, I'm actually running down to AutoZone. I'm gonna pick up uh, a window motor for the passenger door. Uh, they supposedly have it in stock, so that's gonna be the next video. Look out for that. Uh, but I just wanted to add before I close this out, I was looking on thirdgen.org at the, uh, the thread where the guy who sells the uh, tack boards from. And like I said, uh, after I put mine in, I noticed it's reading a little low. And I figured that was just because of um, when I had the car tuned, uh, the way they uh, adjusted the HP tuners, they maybe need to change the, uh, the setting in there, which you can do. You can change it from, uh, from like V6 to V8 and different uh, settings to get the, uh, the gauge to actually read what the engine is putting out. But it actually turns out that on the thread, and I didn't even notice it on the board. I'll put a picture up so you can see what I'm talking about. He actually includes a tiny little potentiometer on the chip. And it's positioned in a way that you can put the chip in, pop the cluster in before you put it back together, and then that's going to allow you to actually turn the little potentiometer and then bring your needle up to uh, whatever your engine RPM actually is. So that is going to be the fix of my car. I just got to go and pull... Um, cluster out again. Uh, I mean, as you can see, it's really not that hard to get it out, but I am going to um, adjust the potentiometer. I just need to pick up a scan tool uh, or borrow one from my friend just to get the exact RPM of the engine so I can match uh, the gauge up to it perfectly. But yeah, that's going to fix the problem. So, I mean, if your uh, tack isn't reading correctly for 60 bucks, I mean, you really can't beat it. You get the new board uh, and it's adjustable, so you can really dial it in perfectly no matter uh, 
what engine or swap you actually have in your car. So I am going to link uh, the thread to that board down below. If I can find the link on eBay, I'll uh, put that in there so you can get it from either source uh, and hopefully get your uh, tachometer working again. But as always, if you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, comment,